Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. Well, guess what? We've got a very special video because back in June, I put out a challenge to see if any pro could beat one verse seven insane AI. Now, we're going to put $500 on the line for a new challenge, and it's something a little bit spicier. So... In the initial challenge that we did back in June, it was a lot about just surviving endless waves. And it wasn't so much uh, about getting out of the map and killing the opponent as much as it was just defend and stay alive and try to be efficient enough to hang on and eventually win. We wanted you to be more proactive in this challenge. Uh, so we've basically said, let's create a speed run challenge where it's not just about surviving, but it's more about how quickly can you actually kill the AI. So you see right now, uh, you can see where fixing our settings quickly. But other than that, we are playing on a map which we've specially modded here. Uh, we've actually set this up for one versus 10. Yep, you heard it right, one versus 10. Not one versus seven, one versus, uh, <laughs> one versus 10. <laughs> this challenge is actually so much fun. It is so ridiculous. It is, uh, it's it's wild. Now, obviously one versus 10 is not really uh, something which you can speed run. Even one versus seven. I mean, some of those games took over an hour. There was often half an hour of you thermal hero marines slowly going around or goblin cleaning up their opponents. But on this one, uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, before we go into all of that, uh, if you do just want to find out immediately how to play the map and how to submit, just go straight to the end of the video. Uh, I go over all of that, so the last couple minutes of the video, it's going to explain how to submit and uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so back to the the challenge itself. All right, so we've got one verse seven. It took you know U thermal like 71, 72 tries to finish and stuff. As I said, I wanted to be more proactive, so I tried it out, and we've actually lowered the difficulty here to ten. Uh, hard AIs. We've also split the races, so the races and the difficulty is locked, uh, so it's like three, uh, what is it, three Terran, three Protoss, three Zerg, and one random. So there's only one race that is random, so it, unlike the other ones where if you got a good spawn of races, like first seven random, none of that's going to be there. It should be highly consistent, even though the build orders will vary in terms of what the AI plays. Um... You can see here I'm opening incredibly greedy. I'm going command center first into a barracks and a double gas here. I've also got one idle worker. I'm realizing all my settings have been messed up here. I think, I guess Dot was taking some screenshots on my computer for thumbnails. <laughs> I was like, why are the settings so messed up in this game? I've got a worker standing next to the gas. Finally, I spotted it. Oh my gosh. So um, yeah, while we're just setting up, obviously I've decided to be incredibly greedy. You actually get a ton of bases and you only have one entrance. So it's a locked spawn. You always spawn down here in the bottom right and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases with one choke point going into it. So it is a much easier setup uh, rather than the claustrophobic setup of um, uh, the, the one verse seven challenge. But for, for those who don't know, you might think, oh, this is easy, hard's not as hard, blah, blah, blah. Guys, it's a speed run. So speed runs are not about, is it impossible to finish the game? It's about how quickly can you finish the game. And that's what this is all about. So what's cool is, like, I feel like anyone in Platinum 2, Platinum 1, might be able to win this challenge, but it'll probably take them several hours to do. Whereas I think some pros might get as low as 10 minutes of... I don't know if that's possible. 10 minutes seems wild, but maybe, maybe 15, 12? I'm not sure. <laughs> They'll definitely be able to get the time down a lot. Obviously, I don't know exactly how this can be abused. Um, but I think a lot of people underestimate hard because they think, oh, hard AI is not that good. But the thing is, I've actually had a few uh, people try this out, very high level players. And a few of them, uh, most of them actually lose the first time they play because they get caught being too greedy, trying to like rush up, get their economy going so then they can go and kill the opponents. And they underestimate the hard AI and get swarmed by them. So when there's 10 AI, you do have to be wary. They still build an immense amount of units. And it is kind of reminiscent of those 1 verse 7 games where suddenly just a horde of army comes out of nowhere and can swarm over you and end the game. Let's see, is there anything else I've uh, missed talking about here? Uh, no, not really. You can see I'm, I'm trying to get up a tank as quickly as possible, walling off super quick third CC as well, all getting to build on location. I've chosen to build Terran here. Um, I, I think this is doable with every uh, race rather easily. So far, I've tried it a bunch of times. Um, Terran and Zerg, I've had the most success with, but I'm sure there's some Protoss strats that I just haven't quite figured out yet. I only played Protoss one game, actually, and I really messed up the opening. That's why... So I have this, like, this lasting bias where I'm like, man, that took me, like, an hour to win this. <laughs> and it's because I got mauled from their first attack and lost a ton of workers. 
uh because i was being way too greedy in that one but yeah you can see i'm going for the barracks there uh very quick double ebay so <clears throat> i've decided hey i want to get lots of upgraded marines because they're so high damage that way i can like just defend with siege tanks slowly move those forward across the map and then just like run into people's bases with marines and try to eliminate the players one or two at a time as quickly as possible so that's kind of the strategy i'm going for this is of course not refined at all so i mean this is going to be the initial time record which you all better bloody start feeding as quickly as possible because uh, i i definitely have a lot of room to improve i'm going to be playing this on stream a fair bit as well see how fast i can get it myself and uh, who knows hey if i have the fastest then i get to pay that 500 dollars to myself so that'll be, that'll, be, that'll, that'll be pretty awesome uh, that'll be a lot of fun uh not really I'd, I'd like to give some money back to the community but uh We'll see how it goes, of course. Um, so if you attack them early is one thing you got to watch out for. That's something, uh, a big mistake I made early on. Um, because if you do attack too early, remember that does trigger the other nine AI to instantly come to their aid and attack you. So I have had games where I attacked too early and just got myself killed. Um, definitely one where you still need to get yourself set up. A bit of a bigger Protoss attack coming in right now. Zealots are depths, but luckily they are all derping out. A depot goes down. My barracks is actually taking a lot of siege tank friendly fire there. You can see I'm getting that starport as well as up to five barracks. We've got stim on the way. We'll get combat shields after that. And of course, as the siege tank count grows, that's going to just create a lovely little kill zone. Um, bit of a supply block right now. Oh god, that's actually quite a lot of bio. Oh man. Oh man. Okay, probably should have been focus firing with my tanks but as it was we do take it down unfortunately the friendly fire kills my barracks so i'm gonna have to rebuild that one from scratch i mean it's better than losing actual fighting units but it's still kind of rough here and uh yeah it's, it's 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 i don't remember this being the most refined run so i'm kind of embarrassed to watch this now because i'm like oh man you guys are gonna see so many improvements that i could have done but hey i guess that's part of the fun and the thing is with this challenge right it's all gonna be done on stream so i really want us as a community will be like learning from each other and stuff and uh basically not really hiding strategies because everything has to be you know all, all your official submissions have to be played on stream it's actually going to create a, a fun scenario where it's like you can't just be like oh i figured out this one thing on the final day and then pulled it out you know and and get the win instead there's going to be i would at least hope a meta evolving where we're all learning from each other and seeing who can uh figure that stuff out the most and the fastest I feel like there's some some other details I should talk about here, but honestly, we're going to talk about it at the end with how to submit. So let's just narrate this game a little bit more here as we do some supply drops for efficiency. Realize that's probably not the, the smartest way to do it. Oh my god. Okay, luckily no roach beat or anything. Uh, depots are a little slow to raise. A few marines going down. The barracks is once again burning. But uh, I think at this point, these early attacks at least don't seem that powerful. Now, you might think, oh, hard AI, that's as hard as the attacks will ever get, but they actually... The longer they go, they will get to Broodlords, Ultras, uh, Carriers, you know, these sorts of units. And that does create problems because those units are much more difficult to deal with. And these early upgraded or unupgraded units, you know, no charge. Zealots, Stalker sentries aren't really all that scary. So I actually think this is totally fine now. Gonna take a fifth command center. One thing I haven't really optimized is also my like worker count. I don't really know how many workers I want to build in command centers. Because inevitably, you probably want more army supply and less army, uh, less economy. There we go. Accidentally building bunkers instead of depots. So I'm going to try and move forward and take this, uh, this forward choke point. Uh-oh. Oh, oh my god, I just lost four marines to a baneling. Yowchies. Nubbed it. But as long as I can get forward to that extra choke point, that's going to give me a nice staging point forwards. And you can see how the map is a little bit friendly. And I remember when I was first playing it, after playing the other challenges and watching them so much, I was like, oh, is this too easy? But I very quickly realized every time I underestimated it, I realized just how hard it is to get 10 AIs out of the game. And who knows, maybe that'll be a big part of the meta that evolves is like, how do you actually get them to leave the game? How do you actually get the AI to leave? What is the condition? Is it kill all the workers and then kill their command centers or hatcheries? Like, is there specific things you can focus on to like blitz them out and almost cheese them out of the game? I'm not quite sure. And I do wonder if, like, you know, I didn't use any liberators in this game. But, like, hey, what if I siege some liberators around the edges? Would that make this quicker? Or is it not really as important as just getting the critical mass of marine tank out? 
Should I just be going battle cruisers so I can fly forwards? Not quite sure. We're going to start moving these tanks uh, over to the edges. <laughs> I love how serious my face is right now. I'm like, man. I think at this point, I felt like I was taking way too long to make progress forwards on the map. I'm like, man, it's already almost 10 minutes. And I think it was dawning on me that I was definitely not going to have a super impressive time to kick this challenge off. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to transfer some SCVs around. Oh, actually, we're bringing them to the front to repair and maybe build turrets as well. Oh, great positioning, but oh, void rays. I, I wasn't expecting air units just yet, so we're going to lose one tank on the edge. The Marines are trying to defend that other tank. I don't want to throw too many Marines away. Oh, they do manage to keep them alive. The SCVs should be arriving pretty soon. And you can see those tanks there doing pretty nicely. So, yeah, I'm trying to get 3-3, three, three, more vehicle weapons, another armory, getting some more... Up. Reactors going, obviously just mass orbitals, so I have plenty of mules and scans as needed. And we're not building any more SCVs, that's for sure, because we're going to have so many mules, we really don't need them. Going to try and build some sensor towers and turrets around here. And it's my first time to branch off with some marines, but we've only got three medevacs. They're pretty light on the juice, and it's only about 30 marines, so I wouldn't say this is the most effective move for me. I think like 50, 60 marines would probably be able to get a bit of a quicker kill here. And you can see spines and cannons spread through the bases. The AI does like their static D. Almost losing a medevac there. We've got a few more marines coming forward though. Zealots warping in on a slow pylon. Wow. Does the AI not know about the difference between fast and slow pylons? Maybe it doesn't. For those who don't know, if, if a pylon's near a gateway or a nexus, it becomes a fast warp in a pylon. Uh, a warp gate or a nexus, I should say. Okay, another big attack there. I, I look away. Apparently, I'm just like, yeah, tanks will deal with it. And there is there is an argument behind don't build too many tanks, right? Because having more marines to get in here, like, you can see this is how I'm going to kill these two players up here. So I've isolated these two players. I'm starting to gun down their stuff. I've got marines spread in both of their bases. Going to keep killing their probes. But, oh, more units are coming up here. Okay. Damn it. They got past the siege tanks. Normally, the tanks aggro them up to the, mid the middle. That's what I was relying on. So you see, I'm going to try and scan that. Yeah, okay, they didn't quite have vision all the way over. So we've got to make sure those units do actually pull those units in that direction. Trying to build some more turrets as well. Trying to move some tanks to the left side. I'm already thinking about moving over to get those two players out. But you can see, man, it takes a while to kill the AI. And the hard AI, you know, it still builds a lot of stuff. So there's just a lot of raw hit points and material that you need to remove from the board. Turrets building just about everywhere. Trying to replace those marines. 3-3 three, three should be done now. And since the AI is usually very slow to upgrade, 3-3 three, three upgrades should be a massive, massive, massive advantage. I mean, this should be absolutely epic. Yeah. All right. So you can see now the turret tank spam in the middle is doing all right. The marines are just getting their job done pretty much automatically. I think here is where I should have been focusing a lot more and starting to throw SCVs away. You know, get a few more orbitals to drop mules. Maybe throw SCVs away to get more uh, units out. It's funny because there's part of me that's like, oh, I shouldn't give too much away. I should let you all figure out the challenge for yourself. But realistically, I know that I'm not the best at these sort of challenges. <laughs> and like you, Thermal, and everyone is going to be so much quicker to figure them out since they've played hundreds, hundreds of games with these sorts of things. But I do think it's going to be enough of a, a real fresh breath of air simply because they're not used to having to deal with the... Uh, Ooh, first AI out. Okay, first AI out on 13 minutes. Second one out as well. Oh, yeah. Except that surrender. Oh, my God. Did I not see this? Oh, no, okay, I did. Okay. I, like, I don't know how long that stays there before you, if you don't accept it, they might stay in. All right, so we got rid of the two players in the top right. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, 13 minutes, I mean, it feels like, oh, man, just to take out two, there's still eight players remaining. That doesn't feel great. But... I think now that we've got such a big wedge of tanks in the middle and turrets, it can handle itself for the most part. I did forget to get building armor, I think, which is a problem. We're going to start to move these tanks forward to that left side, just making sure we can bait our opponent into those. Oh, we accidentally blocked the ramp there. That's a... I think we'd queued some tanks down, but yeah, I think that tank on the ramp was uh, kind of in the way. Oh, those tanks. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, and the Immortal. Oh. oh, man. Lots of tanks taking damage, but luckily, I think only one died. I'm going to move those tanks forward as well. Okay, beautiful. All right. 
That's it. You see, now we've got 69 units on this hotkey of Medivacs and Marines. Oh, we just walked into that Widow Mine. That was a real noob move. If you run in and focus it quick enough, you can kill a Widow Mine before it fires, but of course, Marines don't have long range, so if you're not doing that quite right, the Widow Mines will ruin you. Ooh, Zealot Stalker, Immortal Void Ray. Luckily, no charge. I'm only going to lose maybe one tank there. We do send a few Marines back down just to make sure that tank position remains, because that's going to stop the future attacks, which will allow this to go on. Pulling back the weak medevacs. Ravens are getting gunned down. Yeah. I think we're just going to try and clear the Terran out first. You can see I'm kind of moving to that top left side. Got a lot more Marines coming forward. Just going to keep grabbing those from the rally. Oof. Oh, those tanks are slaughtering, man. Oh, this is pretty sick. Ultras! Oh my god, that's a lot of Ultras, though. Oh my god. Okay, 15 minutes. A big Ultra army here. The Marines are going to try and lure them to the low ground just to get those get them away from the Siege tanks. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Okay, I'm going to keep trying to kill these bases. I don't want to waste any time. I don't want to get too distracted. Oh my god, I'm losing a lot of tanks, though. I'm basically losing control of this left side, which is not good. The Fungal going to take out those SCVs as well. More tanks are coming to the low ground. I'm going to keep on rebuilding those tanks as well as more Marines now. Field see, we're transferring over to these bases. And thinking about where to transfer workers to. Maybe building some more fabrics. They're further back, though. So maybe you should be building forwards production with how much money I have in this game. All right, so these guys look like they are going to be getting eliminated in a moment. We're just leaving a few Marines to make sure they're not getting random buildings up. Okay. Oh, man. You can see it's, it's, you really got to like sweep the base up like it's a vacuum cleaner because if a single worker gets around, they just start rebuilding and you do not want them to rebuild. I, I remember I had games where I didn't fully eliminate the AI trying these different challenges out and then you come back later and they're like, they rebuilt all this stuff. Sometimes they're banking a lot of money. So you've got to, uh, you got to put them in the ground, man. Two stakes to the heart, you know, not just one. All right. We should be getting some GGs, surely. Maybe they expand it up to one of these bases up up through the middle lane. So that's the one thing I'm worried about. Because, like, I'm like, where are the GGs, dude? Maybe when the Nexus goes down, we'll get one here. Oh, okay, those Marines are going to fall back. Ultra goes down. All right, we've got one GG. We should be getting another one. But it looks like we've cleared everything out in this bottom left side. And yet the other player has not GG'd. So that's kind of a bummer. Looks like player six has not has not actually tapped out, have they? All right, so we're going to have to move on up, see exactly what the hell we can do. Maybe moving the tanks forward now as well, because we've, we've killed the four players that are closest to us, but now we need to actually move our tank position forward. And that's where things can get a little bit awkward. Infestors coming forward. We've only got a few tanks there, but with the turrets in front and the rally nearby, hopefully it's okay. We'll build a planetary on the right side anyway, just to make sure that position is secured. We're also going to build a few command centers around the map, apparently. All right. Gonna try and put those tanks on that ledge. Don't really see any splash damage or anything. That's all good. Okay, we finally got the GG from player six. There we go. Maybe this was his base. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, no splash damage or anything. We might be able to just run straight forwards from there and kill some more players since that's such a big mass of, of Marines and Medivacs. Uh oh, they're running into stuff though. Okay, no, 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 we can't. Yeah, yeah. This is what happens. You know, you attack and you pull the aggro. So you want to try and pull those giant armies into your tank position. Ooh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But, yeah, some... Oh, the fungal! Ow, that fungal actually really hurt. Luckily, the ultras aren't quite in big enough numbers to, to really clean the marines up. We're lo losing a lot of marines, nonetheless. There's even a battle cruiser in here. I think I still have way better upgrades. Obviously, there's, like, so many AI. I'm not really checking the upgrades because... There's so many different players. I don't even have their colors on. I just have them all as red because I like the enemy being red. But there's an argument behind putting the color mode on so you can individually see which player's units are which. And that way you can kind of start to realize like, oh, okay, I didn't kill purple yet. Oh, I've killed yellow. I've killed green, that sort of stuff. I think, um, yeah, these SCVs definitely should be thrown away. I think later on in this game, I actually realize and do it. Go in and change the color mode. All right, I need that marine count. Come on, man. Let's get over to that left side of this map. Come on. So we're trying to reinforce, but you can see this attack has really stalled out. They're even trying to retake this expansion in front of my face. And for some reason, I'm not bringing that army forward. I don't know why. <clears throat> Definitely want to be doing that. It's it's cool that I'm building command centers, but if you look at the bank, you can see this is not important. Not if you're speed running. Six. There's no way I'm going to get through 6k minerals, 4k gas in the rest of this game. 
So I should really be focused on like building forward production and just trying to eliminate these players. Alright, you can see, let's go, come on man. Come on, we've got a lot of units at the rally. Oh my god, dawdling. Guys, this is some very, very subpar speedrunning. You can tell that I have almost never speedrun in my life. And uh, <laughs> apparently I don't understand urgency. Alright, that planet's here on that right side, which means we can bring even more tanks to the left. Oh, 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 here we go. Nope, 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 that's a lot of dudes again. Alright, we're going to try and fight one more time with the siege tanks. Let him come into our tank line. His tanks are getting crumbled there, which is real good, but I've got to gotta pull back to that tank line. Alright, watch out for the infester. Oh, big juicy fungal on my face. God damn. Those fungals are really, really painful. Tanks friendly firing each other a little bit as well. But it looks like we've broke the back of that army, and that means we can move our tanks here forwards wedge them in the ramp oh no that fungal is devastating oh my god all right hold the marine key down bro hold the marine key down okay i think i'm, I'm thinking about forward production now oh man those those fungals were brutal dude is there a dt in there no i think it was just an observer or something flying overhead all right as long as I hold that position, I'll be okay. You can see I'm looking around my bases. My instincts are like macro, 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 but I think uh, it should be much more about just getting army on the front as quickly as possible. Planetary is kind of sieging him a little bit there. All right. Yeah, yeah. The tanks, you can see now, are often killing the units as they come down the ramp, which is fantastic. Realizing I never really finished my upgrades off, but hey, we're almost maxed again. Just need to wait for these Marines to get to the front. And since we've managed to maintain this position, we should be able to separate those two players on the left. But you can see getting these choke points, they're, they're almost like little strategic checkpoints along the way, where it's really important to get to those. So there we go, we've got SCVs to repair the tanks. Um, and it's time to go with these Marines, man. That's like, that's a good 50 Marines or so. That should be enough to do some damage. See, I'm trying to just get these tanks a little bit further forward. Man, I panicked when I saw that High Templar for a second, but luckily it was just a uh, just a, uh, a non-energy High Templar, one that had just been warped in. You see, there's another one there. doesn't quite have 75 energy, so luckily these guys are only warping in the High Templar at the last second. Otherwise, Psystorm could ruin my day like those fungals were earlier. And you can see we've got turrets over there doing an alright job, just, you know, bleeding off enemy units, building more of them just to make sure it doesn't get broken my right side got broken then we would absolutely be annoyed at having to divert any units there because any time wasted is just rough at this stage there's actually a base just to the north here i think i'm going to realize at some point that i can siege across that gap we've got okay man we're already over 22 minutes so this is this is definitely uh taking a while to get through but it looks like we've broken the back of these two players and hopefully I can clean up the next ones like a lot quicker now that we've got such a forward position because just like I had a defensive choke leading into all my bases the top four players only have one choke leading into them so get it once you get in there you should be able to theoretically finish them pretty quickly come on marines man with gun they're highly yeah I think it's the mobility of the marines that that's made me like just automatically go to them in this challenge because I'm like man how do I kill 10 players so quickly but the power of high damage and high mobility is uh, absolutely juicy. Add that tank splash on these choke points. I think lurkers and uh, mass links could be really good for Zerg. Just if you want to follow the same vein of strategy of mobile high damage units, the links just run in and kill everything. And the lurkers hold the choke points. For Protoss, the problem is that like disruptors aren't that great, right? Because you've got to manually throw the shot, so you have to watch it a lot more. So it's good for surviving. But it's kind of hard. Like, could you do Disruptor Zealot? I guess you could. But you're going to have to watch the uh, the Disruptors a little bit more. And maybe you'd mix in some Immortals to help kill all the buildings as well. Just because Immortals do so much damage versus Armored. So maybe Immortal Zealot Disruptor is a good army. I feel like Air isn't. Just because it's so expensive and supply inefficient that you can't actually kill their stuff. There we go. Some cheeky seed shots across the gap. Very nice. Very nice. And we're moving forward. Yeah, if we can if we can take this choke point, that's going to be great. Now, I'm realizing that, like, on this right side, wait a second, I still haven't cleared up that green base. And there's, like, if I can get secured here, well, I don't actually need that army down in the bottom right. 
So those tanks back there, I can unsiege and move forward once I push in here. And yeah, that's a lot of Marines. So, oh, that was the fungal to Endor Fungus. Oh, no, and a Widow Mine. Oh, my God. Okay, so this was a big mistake for me. You can see it on my face. I'm like, uh, that just added two minutes to the time at least, didn't it? Because I'm going to have to rebuild all these Marines as they die out. I can't stim them now, which is really irritating. And they're all starting to get, like, one shot by enemy tanks and stuff. We do another stim there. <laughs> Another stimmy for the winnie. Uh, these tanks looks like they fight fairly. Hang on. I don't know, dude. Oh, no. There's a broodlord coming in from that left side. That's that's real nasty, man. Broodlord's going to start clearing my tanks over there as well. Oh, I thought I'd kill these players so quickly. And then just, bam. Fungal Widow Mine. Big, big, big problem. So you can see there is, like... You'll get rewarded if you have some quick micro and reactions. You definitely can. And also if you have forward production, because I'm still rallying units from my side of the map. And in hindsight, that seems really silly. Feels like I could already have like 15 barracks on the front line, just instantly popping 15 marines out at the time. Don't even bother with reactors, you know? There you go. Fusion cores on the way. Still moving SCVs forward, but I think I'm... It should be dawning on me that, hey, wait a second. Come on, just get in. Get in there and finish these two off. If we can finish these two players, there's just the four in the top left. Is it four or two players in the top left, actually? Because we've killed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, actually, it is only two players in the far top left. Never mind. I was thinking it was four players up there, but those two players are the richest players. They're probably the guys that have sent the biggest armies because they get so many bases to themselves, whereas the other ones only get two bases plus these low ground gold bases. Um, so it's kind of like two and a half bases per player. But those, those two players in the very top left each get uh, three and a half bases. So they actually get a fair bit more money. We've almost got rid of these guys now. Oh man, the time though is just ticking up and you can see it's hard to get them out. Okay, so we just killed green. So we've got to kill teal. If we kill that command center, that should be a GG from them as well. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. So quickly move, move to the center. Obviously we're racing against time, trying to get it under 30 minutes right now. There's a couple of Broodlords here. Kind of surprised us for a second, but that's okay. Mass Marines, mass tanks are all going to start to come forward. We're going to try and move these siege tanks forward on either side to shoot across the gap, I guess. It's kind of random, but I guess I guess that can work out. Just anything I can do to get extra damage as quickly as possible. Realizing the tanks are so slow to actually move into the base, my Marines should be able to shove through because these guys have been getting aggroed forward to defend their neighbors anyway. So those tanks are going to move up. Yeah, at this point, I'm like, whatever, unsiege and just go. Stim for the win. And I've got so many marines, it might be a good idea to split off. Oh my god, another giant fungal. Jeez. Another fungal came down, but luckily most of my marines were going down to the right side. And you can see here, just stim for the win. And don't quite lose that medevac. The marine damage output is just insane. So you can see here, we're pushing forward, splitting into every single base. I got 2 minutes and 20... Yeah, two minutes and 10 seconds now to, to beat that time, man. We need to beat that time of half an hour, please. If I started at longer than half an hour, that's going to be ridiculous. But yeah, I, I do like that this seems accessible, right? And, and I hope watching me play it makes it seem even more accessible because what I really want is I want to see a lot of just normal average Joe amateur players chucking on a stream, even if it has zero viewers, one viewer, two viewers, whatever. But just, just you know, chucking on a live stream, even if it's low quality, and uh and trying it out now i think it'll be really cool i think a lot of people even if they don't think they win you know just just getting on and trying it out seeing if you can beat an hour seeing if you can complete the challenge and then comparing it to like youth thermal and stuff I, i'm really keen to see when he starts doing this challenge i assume he will and is that it is that it yes okay 28 minutes and 40 seconds all right finally we got it there you can see that once you get in with a big pack of marines, as long as you've got a big something to defend all the other players that come to their aid, like the wig wedge of siege tanks, you can take them out pretty quickly. And you can see the units lost out there. I actually lost a lot of units, 30,000. It's not about efficiency, it's about speed. Let's be honest though, I don't think I had speed or efficiency in this game. <laughs> all right, so I'm sure a lot of you are asking and wondering how do I submit my run? Uh, to qualify, you must your run must be live streamed. That is uh, non-negotiable. No tactical breaks, pauses, or resume from replays allowed. It all has to be done in one go. So that last game actually wouldn't have counted because I did pause to change my settings a few times. So if you're playing, you know, 
this, you are not allowed to pause while recording that. So we could argue that last time actually didn't count. I'll have to do another one on stream maybe tomorrow or later today to give myself a, a new official record that actually counts. Um, make sure Twitch is saving your VODs as well, just in case you've got that setting on. Make sure you save all your VODs so that it doesn't get deleted afterwards. Uh, you are welcome to practice off stream, of course, uh, but to have it count, it has to be live streamed, even if it's zero viewers. Um, the reason is we want this to be an exciting community event, of course, guys. We want to make sure everyone's playing, sharing it, as I was talking about before. We want a meta to evolve. And we just want it to be something where we can steal tactics and, and, and kind of evolve over time, uh, rather than having people get a sick time, no one knows about it, and then they just drop it on the last day, and we're like, oh, that was way faster. I just think it's going to be way more interesting as a collaborative effort doing it this way. Okay, so how the hell do you play? So to play the custom map, let's go in, guys. We've got custom game. Go to Melee, and all you want to do is you want to search uh, Pig. Well, you can search Pig 1v10, but even if you just search Pig AI, it's going to come up, and this is the map here, right? So uh, it's on every server. If you want, you can do be specific and search Pig 1v10 AI speedrun uh, challenge, and that's going to come up. And you can see there that it's a map. It's up uploaded by Dino Dot. Sometimes it's uploaded, depending on the server, it might be a different uploader, but you can see that it's the the right one so let's just host that up and of course you're gonna see that it's the right map because you can't change the ai on the uh on the info but you can't change race or difficulty those are all locked select whatever you want your race to be you can play as any race and get it in so submissions are going to close on the 25th of january uh 12 p.m sydney time that's my time zone uh we'll put some uh kind of links for exactly where that is actually we've already got it check it out that's uh january 5th 8 equivalent to the 24th of january 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern standard time or early early on the morning of the 25th january at 2 a.m cet so you guys have about three and a half weeks or so to get this going I think that's plenty of time while still keeping it very competitive and having a little bit of urgency for us to evolve a meta and hopefully some players show some groundbreaking ways of getting the hard AI to wimp the heck out of the game. You can submit more than once, uh, but only your quickest time will be the one considered. Of course, if you guys want this form, it's down below in the description to the video. Make sure you guys spread this around and uh, let your friends know as well. I'm really curious just to see a lot of normal people playing this. I think this is way less stressful than the other challenge. Uh, in terms of can I play it and feel like I'm playing the game and making progress. On the other hand, actually getting the best speedrun times. I'm sure once we have pros playing this, it's we're going to realize like how insanely hard it is to actually match guys like... I'm, I'm thinking Uthermal is probably going to be number one at grinding this. But we'll see if there's some surprises and maybe someone else can actually become the, uh, the Verse AI speedrun challenge master. Alright guys, well I'm looking forward to seeing this, this go how this goes. Uh, obviously if this is a lot of fun... I'd love to put up some more cash for some more speed runs and challenges and different community events in the future. Um, this was originally Dotset idea, so shout out to my lovely waifu. Get your submissions in, let me know how it goes. I am going to be seeing you all on my stream and everyone else's stream and seeing how the heck this speed run challenge is going. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time. Goodbye and good night.